Good morning, good morning. Welcome to another Frame Devotional, where our focus is always your personal ministry. We bless the Lord for a new day, and we continue to mine the gems from the book of Joel. Today, I want to encourage you by reminding you that God wants to fix it all, every bit of it. The warning of the prophet Joel was to a drunk nation, stumbling in the path of a prowling lion. It would be absolute tragedy, and God did not want this. It would be like taking candy from a baby, so to speak. The nation was in a stupor while calamity was on the horizon. You see, drunkards sleep, so they see nothing. Drunkards lose control of their minds, so they perceive nothing. Drunkards have their senses dull, so they neither feel nor hear anything. God sent a plea through the prophet Joel. Joel chapter 1 verses 12 to 13 read, Now therefore says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious, merciful, slow to anger, and with great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. The call to turn indicates that the people were no longer in a relationship with God. And that at times when they thought they were in a relationship, it was half-hearted. Thus God says to them, turn to me now with all your heart. The call is to avoid one of the most dangerous and unsuspecting traps, half-hearted worship. Having a sense of being in a relationship with God, but being half-hearted leads to destruction. Why? Because half-hearted worship really equates to no worship at all. Jesus tells us that he does not do half-heartedness. In Revelation 3 verses 15 to 16, and I'm reading from the scripture, it says, I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Half-heartedness is insipid, disgusting to God. And Jesus says, I'll have no part of it. I'll spit you, vomit you out of my mouth. The desire to be with God has to be heartfelt. We should have no doubt, no hesitation to turn towards our God. God can never be an option that we engage with when things go awry. He has to be the source of our lives and one that brings us immense joy. His love should be so active in our spirits that we long for him. We long for our prayer times. We long for our quiet moments with God. We desire the time to be in his presence consciously more than we desire anything else. The sons of Korah had this kind of longing. In Psalm 42 verses 1 to 2, the scripture says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul long for you, O God, my soul thirsts for you, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This kind of longing for God says, I am all in. I desire nothing more than you, Lord. Oh, that our hearts would sing with the sound of longing for our God. That we would fall asleep with a desire to be held by God and that we'll awake with a desire to be led by God, that we'll walk through the day desiring to give ourselves completely to our God. And this total giving is reasonable. 
It's reasonable because God is gracious and merciful, says Joel, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. So the prophet Joel sends out the call to the people of God. Return to your God with your whole heart. Pray fast, search your heart and confess your sins. And in love, grace and abounding mercy, God will receive you. The return to God signifies restoration. Restoration that nullifies everything the enemy has destroyed. Restoration that makes right all the wrongs and establishes you on sound footing. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 record God's promises. It reads, So I will restore to you all the years that the swarming locust has eaten, that the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. I want you to know something. The listing of the different kinds of locusts is not just empty words. Absolutely not. It is God saying that I will completely restore everything the enemy has taken. God wants you to know that he is all in. In Joel chapter 1 verse 4, where the scripture mentioned the destruction of the city, the Bible clearly defined that there were the chewing locusts, there was a swarming locust, there was a crawling locust, and there was a consuming locust. So here, when God is establishing his restoration, he goes through the whole list of them. The swarming locust, the crawling locust, the chewing locust, and the consuming locust. It is God saying to you, I am all in with you. I don't do half-hearted. I do complete restoration. So then, if God offers complete restoration and God is all in, why should we be half-hearted? Can you now see why God does not accept half-heartedness? Because he doesn't give it. God gives complete restoration, complete healing, complete establishment, complete turnaround. That's just the nature of our God. So my challenge to us today as we go through this day, to desire to give yourself completely to your God. To desire to have him and he alone be your heart's desire. To never be half-hearted in your worship or in your service. Because your God never does anything half-heartedly. The beautiful promise of restoration in Joel comes after the pronunciation of the judgment. An indication that there are consequences for sin. But those consequences can never override the mercy and the grace and the goodness of the God who calls you his child. And so now, I'd like for you to commit to yourself, to the God, that you will be all in. You are committed not to be half-hearted in worship, but to give him all that you are, all that you hope to be, and all that you ever will be. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the reminder that you give us all of you. We thank you, God, that you took the time to list every format of the destruction, to let us know that when you restore, you restore everything. God, we want the desire of the sons of Korah to desire you as the deer desires a water brook, to want to be in your presence more than anything else, to plead to be with you, the living God. Father, remove everything from us that causes us to be half-hearted in our worship and in our service. And we commit to you today, God, that by your grace, we will be all in with you. We will offer you ourselves completely. 
And we will be grateful that you are the God who is complete in everything you do. Father God, we desire to be like you, design you above everything else. Take our whole heart, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen and amen. To give ourselves completely to God is to be able to access what God gives completely. I thank you for being with us on Frame Devotional this morning. And if you've not yet done so, you know I'm going to encourage you to like, share, subscribe, spread the word. And by spreading the word, you're enhancing your personal ministry. You know I'm going to tell you this, right? That my wish for you and yours, my heartfelt prayer for you and yours, is that you all be blessed.